today we're going to take a first look at the new Peplink Max BR2 Pro, a new flagship mobile cellular router with dual integrated 5G, dual WAN ports, USB tethering, and more, capable of tethering, bringing together seven connections at once. So we've got all the details. Hi, I'm Chris here with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you a first look at the new Peplink Max BR2 Pro. This is kind of a new flagship mobile cellular integrated router from Peplink and we're pretty excited about this. It actually includes a lot of features that have been on our wish list for a long time. Now, first off, this is kind of the big brother or sequel to the Max BR1 Pro 5G that came out at the end of last summer. This was the um, Peplink's kind of you know, original 5G flagship cellular router is $14.99 and included a single 5G cellular modem. And for people who'd gotten used to the Max Transit Duo and other dual modem routers, going for to 5G was great, but losing the redundancy of dual cellular was kind of a step back and could be frustrating for people who need redundancy and reliability. So enter the Max BR2 Pro. This one, you know, it's basically the same modem. It's a lot of the same guts as the Max BR1 Pro 5G, but doubled. So you've got two cellular modems. They're Qualcomm X55 based 5G modems, very capable. But we'll talk about a potential downside with those later in this video. So it's got two Qualcomm X55 5G modems. It's got the eight cellular antenna ports you need to talk to them. It has got something that surprised and excited us, two ethernet WAN ports. So these two ports here are two 2.5 gigabit per second, so very fast Ethernet WAN ports, so you can connect, you know, Starlink and a, maybe a secondary 5G hotspot or some other Ethernet WAN source. So two of them to play with, which is a big improvement over the one that was on the uh, Max BR1. And then you've got four Ethernet LAN ports, so a lot more LAN to play with. So you probably do not need an Ethernet switch if you're hooking up a moderately sized network, you know, hooking up your smart TV and your network server and, you know, maybe your printer or your, uh, your uh, desktop or your laptop. You've got a lot of Ethernet ports to work with right there, all here. And this is something that is very exciting. It's a long time wish for us. The Peplink is finally putting a USB port onto the Mac series so you can, for the first time in the Mac, tether via USB to, um, <clears throat> tether via USB to mobile hotspots or things like uh, Peplink's Max adapter here. So just plug in that USB and you've got another connection. So that's brings us up to five connections. And then the Wi-Fi radio in here is capable of Wi-Fi as WAN. So you can do upstream Wi-Fi on both 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi. So you're up to seven potential connections that you're able to bring together via load balancing or speed fusion cloud bonding. So that is a lot of capability in this chassis here. Um, and it's still relatively small, rugged, mobile, able to handle temperature extremes. It's got the heat sinks and everything. It is physically kind of a beast compared to the Max BR1. Um, so you see it is a lot more than twice as big. Um, some of that is because of the extra antenna ports, of course. Um, and the extra LAN ports, of course. But looking at, at the outside, the external here, you've got a few other things that are kind of swelling this case and probably you know, I would have preferred they left these out and made the case smaller. And the one thing you see here that is new, that is actually very old, is this is an RS-232 serial port. So a serial port dating back to the early days of computers that for almost no consumer applications, but has actual potential for tying into mobile control systems or embedded controllers or machine to machine functionality. So this is there for more the enterprise market and I uh, can't really think of any consumer uses. Um, so wish that wasn't there, wish the case was smaller, wish it was a little bit more of a compact thing. But other than that, it is basically a doubling of the Max BR1 Pro 5G, including when it comes to price. So the Max BR1 Pro 5G was $14.99 and the BR2 is $28.99. So it is a pretty pricey investment in technology. Has a lot of capability. It is half the price of the M Peplink's MBX Mini. So there are other former dual 5G router. It's half the price of the MBX Mini, but it is still a considerable investment for anybody who wants to put this into their uh, RV 
for boat installation. Now, what, what do you get for that $28.99 and what are the potential trade-offs that you have to keep in mind? Well, comes with the, the router, of course. Comes with a power supply or you can um, get an adapter and run it directly off of DC. So you can either get an AC power supply or get a cable and wire directly into a 12 or 24 volt DC system. Comes with a GPS antenna because this has the typical peplink functionality of being able to track your device on their in control system. And then comes with a full collection of little plastic stubby antennas for both the Wi-Fi and cellular radio. So um, now it's 10 antennas here. So you can hook things up right away and uh, get online or use the use both modems. But most people will probably actually pair this with an external cellular antenna on the roof of their RV or boat. You'll want two 4x4 MIMO antennas. And so if you're upgrading from a Max Transit Duo or a single 5G device where you only have one, you might hook one radio up initially to your outside 4x4 MIMO and then use four of these for having the secondary 5G radio be inside until you've had a chance to add one more antenna to your roof. But, you know, it does have, you know, that capability. It's nice that they do include those basic indoor antennas. Yep. Now, also included with this router is one year of Peplink's Prime Care coverage. That is their uh, extended warranty and um, access to the in-control cloud management and unlocking of the speed fusion feature if you want to run your own speed fusion server but you do not need to continue paying for prime care beyond that first year if you're intending to not take advantage of those advanced features and if you're only going to be using the speed fusion connect bonding service which works with or without prime care so we've got details about all of that if you well, want to dive deeper into prime care and whether or not that makes sense um, but overall, this is a very capable de device. We've got one of the very first units to come to the United States. We've been testing it for the last few days. It seems to perform um, quite capably. It's got the same uh, one gigabit per second a routing engine that was in the Max BR1 Pro 5G. And when you're running over Speed Fusion Connect and doing encrypted uh, transmissions capable of 200 megabits per second of encrypted bonded um, data transfer to the Speed Fusion Connect server. So it is very, very capable of bringing together a lot of connections and uh, putting them to use in interesting ways. Um, and it's, it's kind of a worthwhile new flagship. The two catches, there are two catches, and the one is the obvious one. This is a very pricey device. This is overkill for most people. If you do not feel you need dual 5G, you do not need the extra WAN ports, you do not need all this capability. A more basic router, either either a single 5G or like something like the Max Transit Pro with um, dual non-5G modems in it in a smaller, much cheaper uh, chassis could be a good way to go. And then here's kind of one of the other big catches is this is a dual 5G modem device, but the modems in here are Qualcomm X55 modems. Now this is a great, great modem chipset. It is, um, performs extremely well in 4G, performs extremely well in 5G, but it is not nearly as future-proof as some of the brand new Mo Qual uh, Qualcomm modems that are like the X65 and beyond that are coming out in 2022. So the new X65 has uh, two interesting capabilities that this will never have the one is that it will be better able to combine low and mid band frequencies. And this will matter for all carriers in the future to give a little bit more range and uh, 5G speeds over longer ranges. So the, as X65 and as the cellular networks evolve to support that, um, the newer devices will have a little bit more capability there. And then the bigger catch is particularly if you are somebody who uses AT&T. AT&T's mid band spectrum that they're calling the or what analysts are calling the Andromeda spectrum. This uh, big chunk of C-band that AT&T is gonna start rolling out later in 2022 and primarily in 2023. So the kind of the heart of AT&T's upcoming truly worthwhile next generation 5G network is not supported by the X55. So this device is kind of always gonna have its hands tied behind its back on the future AT&T 5G network. It'll connect to 5G, but it won't connect to a, basically AT&T's sweetest, juiciest 5G. And that is a bit of a catch. We'll run great T-Mobile, great on Verizon, AT&T, their future 5G. This is going to be marginal. Now, one way around that is we'll use an AT&T 5G hotspot like the Nighthawk M6 here and just connect that to the Ethernet WAN port. And that way you've got maybe 
5G Verizon, 5G T-Mobile using the built-in modems, AT&T with a portable modem, and there you've got all three big carriers, you've got their greatest 5G possible, um, you know, going together like that. Or if you're not in a rush, I'm sure there will be a future version of this that includes the X65. So just keep your eye on, on how this product evolves and maybe look for that next generation modem to come out sometime in 2023. So that is the basically the one of the only Achilles heels and what's looking to be a very, very nice new flagship for people who are looking for flagship caliber uh, cellular integrated routers. So we're gonna be putting this into our extended testing where we've got it installed into our van and are taking it around on our summer van trip and we'll be testing it in a variety of conditions. Our members will be able to follow along with our ongoing results, experiences, the quirks we discover in our member forum. So if you're a mobile internet aficionado, please join us and go into our detailed hands-on testing notes. You know, as for this particular test unit, it was provided to us by Peplink and our partner Mobile Must Have um, that we do a lot of uh, combined resources with. So um, if you are interested in a router like this, uh, the discount that Mobile Must Have provides to our MIA members, it will actually more than pay for our membership in our site in and of itself for something this high end. So definitely um, look into that. And well, if you're trying to decide if something like this is right for you or not, or maybe you've got much more basic needs like most people do, we've got extensive resources over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center on understanding your needs, um, deciding whether a router is right for you or not, and then picking between and deciding what features matter most and what are the trade-offs that are important to make. So please go join us over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And if you are interested in the higher end fun tech gear like this, join us and uh, become a member and become a mobile internet aficionado and uh, join us playing with these cool new toys. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.